Salatu salam ala Rasulillah. Uh, once again, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, share the live. So we want a lot of people to benefit from a very special guest and a special sit down. Uh, we see a lot of lives nowadays. People talk about stupid stuff. You know, it's driving me crazy. Stupid kids doing foolish things and everybody lives, loves it and they share it. But when you talk about something that's serious and beneficial and needed, people don't pay attention to it. But for us, we don't care about views. We don't care about likes. We don't care. We want to spread the message, yes. And that's what we wanted to get out. But we don't do things for that reason. Because in the end, we have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the responsibilities we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to stick up to, for our brothers and sisters who are oppressed or those brothers and sisters that are in places where their voice is not heard. I know a lot of people nowadays, they just want a platform to, to make money or to get popular. So they'll go out there and do the most foolish, ridiculous things. And everybody will share like, oh, look at this person doing this stupid thing. Why do I need to see them doing something stupid? All right, stupid, let them go. But when it's something beneficial, nobody wants to talk about it because people don't want to see it. So today, inshallah, we're going to be speaking about the prison system here in the United Kingdom. And a lot of our brothers and sisters, many of them which are Muslim, um, that are caught up in that system and they have no voice. People have uh, yani, muffled them and tried to forget about them. And many of us as Muslims are not concerned about them because it's not going to bring you views or you're worried about getting cancelled or you're worried your you know, visa is going to get... You know, whatever happens, happens. Allah is our protector. Allah is our wali. You know, if, if tomorrow I'm denied entry into any country, it's all right. Allah has got a big, ard, big earth. I'll go somewhere else and I'm not worried about it. So today I really want to bring this subject of uh, brothers and sisters who are in that oppression. I know like our brothers and sisters in Gaza are suffering and, and wallahi we feel their pain and wallahi we make dua for them and whatever we can do to help them, we help them. And we don't want to uh, yani, uh, mock that or, 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 or make or belittle that in any which way. Or our brothers and sisters in China and our brothers and sisters in India, in Kashmir, our brothers and sisters in, in, in Sudan and other areas that are struggling, that are going through hardships. Wallahi we feel their pain, we love them, we make dua for them, we are there for them. I mean. But there are also brothers and sisters struggling right where we live. In the United States, we recently had a Muslim brother who was executed um, for a crime that he continuously uh, denied that he committed. In fact, um, our brother Marcus, I believe his name was, yeah? He, even the prosecutor, now imagine, not the defense attorney, the prosecutor said that DNA evidence showed that he didn't do it. And still they, they executed him. And subhanAllah, his last words, as we saw, he wrote out, it is whatever Allah wills and all praises to Allah. He, he stayed on the deen. He, he wasn't Muslim when he went into prison, but he became Muslim in prison. He changed his life. He did good. But they still executed him. Why? The color of his skin, the religion <coughs> he followed, whatever it may be. But if the prosecutor is saying that this man is innocent, how, how do you execute a man like that, right? So it's something interesting. Um, but that, that is an oppression going on in our own countries, in the United States and in the UK. So today, I really want to, we're going to take some questions. So inshallah, share the live, uh, put your questions on TikTok. We have also live uh, on Mubashirun page, uh, OMF, or uh, what is it? The, the Glad Tidings podcast. So if you're on TikTok, check out the Glad Tidings podcast on OMF, on, uh, we're live as well. And... We're going to take questions, so I want you guys interactive, but I want there to be at least 200, 300 people live before we start taking questions, inshallah. So share the live. 350, 350 all right. Uh, I want at least 500 live before we start taking questions. Then. <laughs> you know? Because, again, this is very important, so please, if you're watching this, not for me and not for OMF, but for the sake of those Muslims that are in prisons who are unable to raise their voice, for their sake, I want you to share this live. Post it on your social media. Um, and we're going to take questions. We have a very special guest. I'm going to introduce him very briefly. Um, it's our brother Yusuf, uh, Dwayne Patterson, right? Yeah, that's All correct. Right. I just call Yusuf now, so I don't want to mess up your yes, name. Yes, yes, please. Uh, but he is somebody that we have some articles online. He was called the toughest prisoner in the United Kingdom. And he did 27 years in uh, prison here. Seven of those in solitary. So confinement, yes. Seven years in, in, in the shoe. That is, that is some tough time. And I'll tell you this, I mean, just, I, I met the brother and he is one of the nicest, mashallah, best-mannered brothers I've met in my life. 
And I'm saying this without any hesitation. Um, and the brother, mashallah, he's changed his life. He, he was not Muslim when he went into prison, right? Uh, before going into prison. I was. You were Muslim? Not the, not the first time. Oh, the first time. Twice. Gotcha. Yeah, two occasions. Right. I can explain that. We'll, we'll sure. let him explain his story. But the key that I do want everybody to share the life for is that he is somebody who's done that much time in prison and changed himself and he's really working hard on bringing the stories of those people that are behind bars and we're going to talk about our brother Chaos and we're going to talk about other people and getting that to the forefront. So share the live and we're going to let you ask questions of the brother as well, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So we want to get people's questions. Uh, our brothers here that are moderating can check the questions, inshallah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, a little history, a little background, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum and assalam. Thank rahmatullah. you very much, Sheikh, for allowing me on this platform as well. And may um, Allah raise your status, inshallah. And I'll tell you the reasons why, brother. I, I truly feel that you are not getting the respect that you deserve. And I'll tell you the reasons why. There's many times, because one of the things that I actually said as well, that I wanted to become the voice for the voiceless. And there was many individuals that I reached out to. And, you know, there's question marks over the likes of my head and other brothers' heads because they say it's too, too controversial <laughs> for them. Right. So nobody really wanted to touch us. And, and I'm saying that, look, forget about, forget about what you may feel about me and so forth. There's brothers right now as we speak that are going through hardship. There's brothers that have been in solitary confinement for a very long time. Now, <clears throat> some of the brothers' families have um, asked me not to mention them because they're afraid of the repercussions. But there's one family and there's one brother that he says that I will be the flag bearer. Mm. And, we, and we know that in, in warfare, we know that the flag bearer is the, the most important person on the battlefield because we know that once, he, w once, once he's down, then the war's over. Mm. He carries that flag. So his name is Marcus Johnson, Abdul Rahim. They also know him as Chaos. Now, this, br uh, this brother, <clears throat> what can we say about him? We can say that he's got an exemplary record because since 2004, he hasn't had uh, adjudication. So adjudication is like being arrested outside. He's not, he, he, he hasn't had that at all, but he still finds himself, he, he, himself in segregations, and which, which is confusing, and units. And what is the reasons? It doesn't make any sense. So these are the kind of, these, these are some of the reasonings that they were doing in order to suppress, oppress, and depress the Muslims. Allow me to, allow me to explain what I'm actually talking about. In, 2000, in 2010, they done this type of operation, which they said that the Muslim population weren't only growing, but they were, they were scared because there was a growing group of individuals that they believed that were the Muslim boy gangs. Mm. So for the good order and discipline of the prison, they said that they were going to remove about 10, which they believed to be the most influential and place them into solitary confinement. Unfortunately, I was one of those brothers that they placed into solitary confinement. The treatment weren't pleasant, as you can probably imagine, because they accused us of many things that didn't really reflect us. But again, we, do, we never fear the blame of the blamers. And one of the things that kind of um, kept me going at times as well was a saying that, um, Dada, she, she once said, I'm led to believe she was once accused of something and somebody came to, came to her and said, so-and-so is saying this about you. And, and she said, what they say about me does not exist in me, but how many times have I been praised for something that I don't possess? So we know that, you know, we know that blame and praise is a part of dunya. Mm. Alhamdulillah. So this is what they've done. So they place us into solitary confinement, which weren't good places. Um, let me talk about my situation. So once I was placed into solitary confinement, for about the first two years, 
I was under what they would call a Mufti unlock. So this is seven officers on full PPE. That's protective gear, so that's the helmets, the shields. I would be on a, what they call a double ratchet. So that means not only would I be dub, double handcuffed, but I'd also be handcuffed onto the officer as well. At no time can I leave my cell without seven officers and a dog and a, and a dog handler. They, <clears throat> they had me on one of the highest unlocks, so that meant that I had to earn everything. That means even reading materials, a pen, toothbrush. I weren't allowed my footwear. I had um, clothing two sizes smaller. Mm. And I posed this question to, uh, to um, one of the guys from the home office that was a military man, and he basically said to me this. He said, the reasons why they do this is to break your spirit. It's a, it's a military tactic that they use. So it became, very, um, it became very alarming. A lot of the things that they'd done, especially with me as well, they said that I was very toxic. They said I was too influential. Mm. So they even kept... One thing that you like to do when you're in solitary confinement is to always have a neighbour. Mm. They didn't even allow me that opportunity for the couple of years because they said that I could influence someone else. So they kept me separated even from those that were separated from mainstream. It was very um, barbaric because the officers were designed, they were like the SAS, like the special forces of officers. So they had no compassion. They're there to fight. And so this is what the brother, Marcus Johnson, Abdul Rahim, chaos, is going through right now. Now the excuse is we've been, we've been talking about his situation and it's building momentum. It's building momentum. But what they've actually done now is, is accused him saying that, oh, we believe that he might hold extremist views, which doesn't make sense. They've never accused him out of the... 20, I think he's been in prison for now, 20 years, 22 years. He's never been accused of actually being an extremist. But all of a sudden now that we're mentioning his plights, that they're saying that, oh, oh, we've got concerns that he might be. So this is justifying his treatment. So from 2004 till now, we're in 2024. This brother has been kept in harsh conditions. 20 years. Yes. SubhanAllah. He needs our help. This is totally unacceptable. He's on the phone, he's happy as... Well. Yeah, oh. alhamdulillah. And this is the power of the brother's character as well. Because even though he's going through this level of suppression, oppression and depression, he still has a smile on his face. There's another brother also by the name of Kevin Fakra. He's been in solitary confinement for 14 years now. So there's lots of other brothers that have gone through that process and... We make dua for them because some of the brothers have become majnoon and now they're in mental institutions. So these are things that need to be um, highlighted. These are issues that need to be discussed. And that's one of the objectives of why they do this. Jump on, man, come on. Yeah, no, no. They want the people to <laughs> yeah. obviously train them. That's the whole point of this whole thing. I think of that's, course. it's important for us to let our brothers know, and again, I've never even met these brothers, but they're my brothers in Iman, so they're my brother. Yes, ma'am. Is that we're with you. you know, we're, you're nah, not, you're we not forgotten. You. We love you. We're there for you. Um, again, these brothers that are not doing anything wrong and they're being put through these types of, uh, I mean, torturous situations, we should never forget that, that that stress is on them. It's very easy for us to sit here in a comfortable environment and be like, oh, wow. But those brothers like our brother here who's been through it, they understand. And I'm not going to pretend. I'm not fake. Like, I've never, I've never done prison time. Alhamdulillah, I left that kind of life when I was 18. I did some CYA and stuff, but that stuff's nothing. So I can't even imagine. But I do know a lot of people that are doing that kind of hard time. And it's very mentally draining. And like our brother uh, had said, you know, this is something that is designed that way. As Brother Yusuf said, it's, it's a torture tactic. So why would you give somebody clothes smaller than their size? Not that you don't have clothes. You know, why would you have somebody earn a toothbrush as part of what you're supposed to, basic human rights, right? But the, the sadder thing to me is people don't want to talk about it. You know, even when I was today, earlier today, I was speaking to somebody, I'm not going to mention their names, some rather popular speakers, and they told me, hey, 
you're in London, come by, we'll do something. I told them, you know, I, I've already got a thing, I'm going to be going live with a brother on this thing. And they were like, why? It's not going to get you views. It's, he's nobody, he's not famous. I told them, that's not what it's about. It's being loyal to my brothers in Iman, right? And they were, they were upset about it. Like, like you're going you're gonna to get cancelled. I told them, let them cancel me. But our brothers and sisters should con be concerned about our brothers and sisters in Iman. So, inshallah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, our brothers and sisters watching, especially our brothers in prison, this is for you. Just so you know that we love you and we're here for you. Definitely. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ